Hello, everybody. Hope we're all doing well. Welcome to the uh, Transformers Issue 1 Director's Commentary. If you can believe it, it's happening. Um, it's been a while since I've done a Director's Commentary. I felt like today was the perfect time to do it, uh, being the day after. So, of course, there are going to be spoilers. Uh, what is up, everyone? What is up? Hopefully, um, hopefully, how do I say this? Sorry, I'm a little out of sorts because I'm like super late. My apologies. I'm very bad at YouTube and technology and going live. So, um, what up, everybody? Godspeed, Alyssa, Rob, Wade, Alex, Vicious, Chucky, Gage, Blizz, John, Jay, Victor, Philip, My Hijack, Ryan, Dan the Man, good name. Um, got a little bit of a new setup here. I'm in a different section as I usually am. Uh, completely forgot to get my files ready for the, uh, for this here live stream. So I'm going to vamp. Um, yes, yeah, Scoot, uh, definitely a lot of spoilers. Though, though there should be a Friday with D-dubs, uh, tomorrow, as, assuming that I have time. Um, that's the always the goal. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Dustin. Thank you, Chucky. Hi, Drew. Um, it's good to have everybody here. Um, really quickly, I'm just going to get my files a little bit ready. Uh, hopefully my computer doesn't melt. I do have quite a few things going on at the same time. Um, all right, so we're going to go to issue one. Let's see. I'm going to copy this. Sorry, one second. This is embarrassing because I don't have anything ready and I'm live in front of 99 people. Oh. Okay. One second, one second. Okay. All right, okay. Um, I thought, oh, let's see, we got some comments coming in. Absurd says, slate it, man. Thank you, Absurd. I completely forgot to grab my light that's going to make me look way better. One second. See if this makes it better. Okay. I think that's better. <laughs> uh, all right. We're back to it. All right. Sorry. A little, uh, welcome all again. Sorry for my all over the placeness. What more would you have from an artist <clears throat> that makes comic books by himself all day? Um, Jim says that I wrote Starscream so well. Well, I'll take that compliment to the bank all day. Starscream's pretty easy to write. Um, uh, oh, and D Danny says, Hey, DWJ, just read your comic, and as a Transformers fan since 2007, uh, I love it. Hope to see more awesome art from you. Speaking of, let's get right down to it. Uh, this is the director's commentary for issue one, so I'm going to be talking about some of my processes and what I was, was going through my head as I kind of go through the entire issue. Um, let me see if I've got this right. Uh, let's see. I think I maybe have frozen, but we're just going to go ahead and keep going. So, um, 
Let's see. Oh, so we got that. Here we go. Okay. Um, did the stream end? Uh, let's see. Let's see. Can everybody see me okay? <laughs> I have no idea what's happening. Um, I've got my copy of issue one here. Um, did a great job. Uh, I gotta say, it looks awesome. Um, Andres Juarez did the uh, design, so thank you, Andres. Mike, of course, Mike Spicer with the colors and Russ Wooten with the letters. Um, okay, stream did not end. We can see all right. Okay, good. Um, but before we talk about this, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about some of my influences that helped me get here and get to this book. So, without further ado, really quick, just to go through it, I can only be so far away from the mic, but I'm going to try. Sorry, everyone. So, um, Mobile Suit Gundam, Yasuhiko, uh, an incredible inspiration for me. I love this artist. Uh, this series uh, is a little unreadable because of the way that the uh, that the way they they write the the English. So it's kind of intense, um, but it is really, really, really amazing. The art is amazing, um, and one of the things that I felt like gave me confidence to be able to do a Transformers comic would was to uh try and make something that was um looked a little like this so obviously this is in black and white but um we can go through it a little bit here so you, you see this panel right here i mean i don't think there's a ruler used in the whole thing um and you know this is not only is it very uh like is it, is it loose but it's also really fun to look at and I was kind of looking for some more I mean I, I've always grown up loving the Transformers comics from Marvel uh, they're a huge part of my childhood but like as I got older into adulthood and doing comics full-time I found myself kind of wanting more and a little more dynamics and stuff those that art is fantastic I'm not uh, poo-pooing at all I just wanted something a little different so um, this was kind of the art, the robot art, that kind of first got me start thinking even about being able to do a comic that would be dynamic, that involves mechanical things. And a lot of that is because it's so smooth and it's so good looking and it's so, it looks easy. It looks like you had fun doing it. Um, you know, the rulers have been put away for the day. Uh, dynamic, fun, honestly, just absolutely inspirational there's some panels in here that are just standouts this is a little blurry my apologies let me let me get that better for us there it is. yeah so uh gundam the origin a big 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 part of it and uh, there's a panel here that i really want to highlight it's a zaku panel it's like zaku's coming out of the oh just like like encased in shadow I don't know if there's any more I don't think so it's just it's, it's so good it's so good look at this so dynamic so awesome look at that that's like transformers all day um Gundam the origin huge reason why Transformers uh, by me exists. Hopefully the stream is going okay. I haven't looked at the comments. Um, Victor's got the whole manga, and it is great. I don't have the whole manga, but I have like the first four. Yeah, Vidansky's coming for me. Uh, you said it cheesier. Um, okay, so next we've got um, uh, some of you may recognize this. This is Dominion by uh, Shiro Masamune. So trying to think there's I'm pretty sure I don't actually know what like comes first here there's two volumes that I know of 
this is conflict ones but the story is basically nonsensical but look at these vehicle scenes these are incredible these are dare i say life-changing look at this little tiny vehicle looking so dynamic turning around this way um i have been openly stealing from these uh action scenes uh with transformers this is a little robotic it's very organic but there's like a, a tank in this story that the characters use um and a lot of tanks, like, look at this turn. Look at that vehicle turn. You see the weight just going, like, turning to the right here. And, like, like leaning over on the side. Really fantastic. Just going to make sure I'm still... Yes, okay, good. I'm still streaming. Sometimes it, like, pauses on my end, so I don't know if people... If I'm just talking into the, the void. Uh, but, like, oh, look at this. It's just so perfect. And, actually, I'm going to refer back to one panel in particular... Uh, I didn't necessarily look at this panel and then draw the panel that I'm going to show you, but this is the kind of vibe I'm talking about, so directly inf influencing here, where they're kind of going in two different directions. Um, let's see, I'm flipping it over here. With something like this, going in two different directions, with the speed lines, you know, with... Uh, some like really nice cast shadows it all started by looking at dominion um or not all started but it's been a huge part of my creative process to really be taking these in these are very very out of print uh but they're not too too expensive like some of the apple seed mangas are uh it was published by dark horse you don't even need to get this in english i'm sure you could find it in japanese for cheaper um this is kind of the same thing but again like you know like like big shapes with little details uh is that kind of the vibe that i was going for sorry i don't want to be inappropriate on this stream but it is shiro so one has to do their best but you know just kind of another even if i don't really uh here's some more tank police but um again shiro wouldn't be here without shiro at all and wouldn't be here without these kind of this kind of like industrial design that i love so much so this is less so but i just kind of wanted to highlight it because this is like one of my favorite books in my whole collection and you should definitely buy it if you can find it um but dominion and you know mobile suit gundam the origin huge two huge huge reasons why this book exists one more thing you're all gonna laugh at me uh but, like, toys are, a, you know, not a huge part of my life, but I do love them, and uh, I know we all do here. This is the uh, Optimus Prime figure that uh, Magic Square put out uh, this past year, this, in 2023. It's an update, so it has a new head sculpt. Um, it looks just like the movie, the 86 movie, which, of course, has been my Bible. He is the AEW World Champion, of course. Um, so, you know, he looks so good. That you can actually like kind of pose him and he, he looks pretty dynamic and i knew that man if the toy looks this cool in real life then i can make him look really cool like look at this it looks great he looks kind of alive and you'll notice uh this is a big something that i wanted to highlight so you see this elbow here uh i'm gonna bend it up okay this seems a little silly but do you see this negative space right here so it's like it's almost like hanging by a thread so it like looks kind of weird and then also right here if he like bends over his like whole back is like basically missing but it allows him to get in some really crazy poses uh you see that like ab bend there so it doesn't actually make any physical sense that this is moving this way right because there's like nothing there but i found if i just kind of ignored uh, if I just kind of ignored, like, what is known, let me fix the light, I'm looking a little deathly on this, but I will in a second, if I just kind of ignored, like, what is real, and just kind of went for it, and kind of drew him, and I've said this in interviews before, like the rock monster from, um, 
galaxy quest where it doesn't really make any sense how he this character thing is creature is being held together but it is uh, and it totally works and um these toys are a big part of me having enough confidence to uh even partake in this project so let's check out the chat <laughs> uh Hopefully we're at the hopefully the stream is still going okay. Let me know if um yes, we should be a little softer. <coughs> Sorry, I, have, I also have a cough that's been absolutely murdering me. Um <laughs> it turned inside out and then exploded. Um, yeah, dude, wait, we're, this is a safe space. We're all a little nerdy and we love it. Thank you for that. Um, stream is fine. Don't worry. Thank you, Buster. Um, yeah, Bumblebee, why? We will get to that. Um, so I actually, uh, was looking around and I can't find the original script that doesn't have story notes for the whole, um, arc in it so uh, I'm not going to show you the script today um, but uh, I was gonna really quick which you know you probably see uh, I wanted to just highlight this poster that I had in my bedroom when I was like 16 uh, when Pat Lee made this imagery uh, you know I was a huge Transformers fan this is all blurry oh no it's not okay huge Transformers fan of course when I was growing up and I read mostly the Marvel comics because that was the only thing that was available at the time and uh, here we have uh, the Pat Lee comics of course that Dreamwave put out I was so excited I thought it looked awesome I still do appreciate its blockiness now um, yeah yeah, so this is another reason why I wanted to do the project. Because, like, I just remember these feelings and these, like, super bright colors that, like, were so awesome. And just being excited with, like, every cover. And I just felt like a kid. Yeah, Pat Lee, all caps. Thank you, Jay. Um, I don't know. And, of course, this image. Like, this is very satisfying. I knew I didn't want to get this this bulbous um, with the designs. But, um, you know... I can't say I wasn't influenced by the absolutely outlandishness of these uh, kind of like larger than life characters. So, um, oh, credit to James Rise and Alex Milne for being the background artist on some of those. Awesome. Yeah, you know, in Countdown, I don't actually know that much about the Dreamwave controversies. I just know that I loved the comics, so that's all I can speak to. I know there has there was controversy. I don't know why, but uh, yeah, it's amazing. Also, really quick, wanted to highlight Jeff Sr. Does anybody here know about Jeff Sr.? Um, hopefully you do, because he is an incredible talent. Um this is uh he's probably one of my favorite transformers artists he has this kind of like very blocky and like kind of like really in my opinion irreproachable style i i can't do anything like this and make it work um let's see we've got uh all these like really wild stylistic choices that he did um let's see this is like absolutely crazy. I really love this one. Like, like, look at the grill getting all messed up here. Uh, cheesier loves Jeff Senior. Definitely wouldn't be here without Jeff Senior. You know, definitely uh, one of my absolutely favorite uh, Transformers artists. It's just like so in your face. It's so bold. You know, it's like it's blocky to the point where like I would not draw it this way, but like I appreciate this aesthetic and I want to see more of it. So I know we were like maybe thinking about getting him to do a cover, but I think we're still trying to do that. This looks so good. Oh, Big Fat Bob wants to know how it's like writing RC. It's cool. Um, 
But that's all I can say because I don't want to give anything away for uh, the future issues. Anyway, so I thought that was cool. And uh, I thought maybe you might appreciate seeing that art. If you don't know Jeff Sr. especially, you should check him out because it's really, really awesome. I'm going to open up our uh, thumbnails here on the left side of the screen. Just give me one second. And our inks on the right side. Holocron loves the first issue. Thank you so much. Um, Jay, I don't I don't I don't think they've announced a third printing. That would be crazy. Who knows though? Um, Devin, I'll see you at Midtown Comics for sure. Um, let's see. Um, ooh, having Furman would be awesome. That would be really cool. G1 Transformers number five, probably my favorite cover of all time. It's really good. Um, my favorite Optimus Prime figure I own is definitely the Magic Square. I have two versions. I have two of these. I have one in a case, which I don't usually do. I just buy one and enjoy it. I have one in a case and one that's next to my drawing desk. This is the drawing desk one. This guy is amazing. Look at these fingers. That's incredible. I am a fan. Uh, okay, let's go back to um, and like really get started here. I know we're t kind of taking a while, but whatever. I don't have places to be. Um, so here we've got um, the first page, and uh, you can kind of see here. Uh, Hasbro wanted me to be be very, like, don't show what kind of war it is, which is fine. Um, I, and I did have to change this uh, these engines from three engines, which I just thought was a little cleaner, to five engines like the Ark is. Um, so I didn't think they'd care that much about being on model when it came to the Ark, but they did. There's some dry brushing technique here, which I really, really like. And this was a page that I just kind of really wanted to make sure I got to draw Optimus Prime on. So, uh, yes. So that's why you've got that there. Um, going down to the next page? Yeah, okay. Let's go to the next one. Um, this was like, I didn't really know how I was going to fit all the dialogue on here, but I had to get a lot of stuff and information across to the readers as quickly as possible. Um, for... Those of you that uh, hopefully appreciate this kind of thing, <laughs> Russ Wooten is a saint. Um, I don't give him enough room. He does his best. Um, I'm over here, like, taking up way too much of the panel and not thinking about him at all. My apologies, Russ. I'm trying to get better at that. Um, I really wanted to go all in on the first half of this page and, like, really sell to you how lived in this world is, even though it's a Transformers book, it was very important to me that we got a vibe and a sense of where the human characters come from. And there's nothing more fun than drawing the heck out of them like a crappy VW hall. Um, it is a bar. Yes, Jay. Uh, and it is. Uh, it was It was a hard thing to draw, but it was also fun. I had to kind of photo bash a bunch of different VW, v, VFW bars. Um, obviously, didn't want to take from anyone specifically. Or any one bar specifically. Just kind of taking the best of everything and kind of combining it into one. Um, and this bartender, Danny the bartender, um, I'm a big fan of. He just kind of stands there. Um, and of course the old guy that maybe has seen something crazy. Total shout out to... Um, uh, even his like haircut is the same as and a hat, and a hat as uh, the Iron Giant. So a little shout out there. Um... Danny Rodriguez, it doesn't really, in my opinion, uh, there might be other people in the Energon universe that have a different time. We don't really have a time period in place. I find time periods in comics like Transformers to be completely unnecessary. Um, if I'm trying to make a historical fiction, then of course it is important. But when it comes to making things like the Transformers, I have just never cared. Um, 
JFK is not getting assassinated in the background on television here, so it's just not part of the story. Um, but you will notice there's no cell phones, so but that's because I hate I hate writing stories with cell phones in them. Um, let's go to the next page. So here um, is actually I have a bit of a goof, a bit of a mistake. If you do the uh, if you do this correctly, if you actually like do the perspective here, the way it should be done. It makes no sense. Uh, he would be sinking into the ground. He's like in quicksand right now. But I could not figure out a better dynamic shot choice that would show Carly and her artistic ability with this van. Like I, I tried to do it like this way, and it didn't really work because it covered up too much of the van. And I realized just how big he would have to be. Like his whole face would have to be like over here, and it just didn't work. I wanted him to be in the middle. But then it also didn't make sense, so I was just like beating my head against the wall. Like, I hope this is okay. I hope people don't notice. Um, yeah, so. Thank you for the compliments on the wagon. Absurd, the new dragon wagon. Of course, the dragon wagon. Uh, the van used in Murder Falcon. Um. I feel like a comic ruined. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, my God. Oh, it's cough. Okay. Let's keep going. Um, this is one of my uh, favorite panels in the book. This top panel. It just does everything the way it's supposed to. It feels really good. And um, this little detail, like, I just felt like it's like you immediately know what that is it's the camping uh little camping overhang you know when people look at the maps and i actually added this this is late in the script because i wanted carly to be talking about her van and it needs something extra which will come into play in issue two there's a little hint for you um this also is one of my favorite panels in the book. I wanted to start getting a little crazy, a little more intense with the shot choices to kind of start getting us into the vibe of otherworldliness. This looks a little bit like they're exploring Mars. Um, that was the goal. Completely clear sky. Really pushing the envelope when it comes to dynamic composition. So this is a uh, some screen tone on here. So that's actually on the page, which I really love doing. Um, Favorite Beast Wars character is definitely Optimus Primal. Sorry. Um, Danny Rodriguez reads the comics with the voice actors used in the story. That's cool. Uh, bottom right panel. I like that panel too, Victor. Uh, Jordan, Jordan loves my human characters. Thank you so much. And there is a ton of ink on this page. Jeez, here. There is. There is. There is. And I love using a ton of ink. And I all I do pen and I do I work from my with a you know pen and ink at home there's the desk is right behind me it's the only way i know how to do it there are people in the ch in the chat who definitely know i tried to go digital especially on my first gig eve online true stories <laughs> look it up i my foreheads were very tall um i tried to start by going digital and it did not work it just i just took too long so um i am so happy with this panel here um, it just feels so perfect. It's like, I don't know why it feels like they're just sinking down, but it does. I actually printed this out on blue line onto the paper here. So this is almost an exact replica. When I do my thumbnails, I will do them on the iPad. I work on an iPad pro. Um, so I can just kind of zoom in on procreate, pull things, stretch things, warp them, whatever. And then I'll move it over to the page on the on the actual page I'll print it out on blue line and I'll ink right over it I don't do that with all of them uh, I remember I drew these characters separately on the page um, and I, this is a panel that I was struggling with I find it's much easier to draw characters falling like this like like across the panel than it is to have them falling down but it was important to me that they fall into the mountain down into the mountain not like on the side somewhere so that's why you have this same problem with Wonder Woman Dead Earth in the early parts where the characters fall and find Diana's body. I was like, how do I draw them falling down? It's very difficult. And here is the characters looking out of an en the one of the engines. 
I think this panel is so great. I love this panel so much. Um, I also love Spike's drawing here as he's like kind of getting up. I'm a big fan of this whole page, actually. I don't know. Bordeaux is like, bring Jetfire back. Okay, noted. <laughs> <coughs> oh, Ploppy Meep. Thank you so much. Bottom left panel. So, so good. Always a big fan of silhouette panels. Me too. Um, you know, I, I like using them in new ways and not just having the characters be silhouettes um, and having it tie somehow to the story. But the, you know, engine here is is like kind of peeking forward a little bit in time to the next page, which is not going, but we're going to get there here. So again, I had to make a bit of an edit. The original art um, has just three engines. <laughs> um, so I had to add these digitally, uh, which I did not want to do, uh, but Hasbro wanted it. So, okay. You know, it's okay. It's okay. It's all right. It is what it is. <laughs> uh, but you can see, like, I really busted my bottom here with the detail on this. I just really wanted it to be special. Also, when I get anxious about projects and, like, are people going to like this? You know, did I make the right choice career-wise? I have a tendency to put that anxiety into the art, which means that it usually gets a little more detailed. That doesn't always mean that the page is better. Uh, but there you have, um, there you have it. <laughs> Thank you, Absurd. Um, I like this. Anyone else watching this while turning the pages of issue one like it's a textbook and we're attending a lecture with Professor Johnson? Heck yeah, you are. Heck yeah, you are. Welcome, class. Listen up. No texting. Um, man, this is another one. Let's see. I'm trying to remember if I printed this out on blue liner. I don't think I did. Um, I just kind of went all the way. Um, I changed this. I think this was supposed to be Bumblebee here. I changed it to some Prowl or maybe it's Blue Streak. Who knows? Um, there's not much to say about this panel. Uh, I Again, anxiety. Definitely poured into this page. Um... Thank you, Silverbolt. Thank you, Rob. Thanks, Keith. <laughs> Stu Warp, appreciate that. Appreciate that. Um, this page speaks for itself. Also, if we can, let's go back to. Uh, I feel like Mike really just colored the S out of these. Um, this was the goal. This was the goal to have um, these pages be bleeding into each other. Um, it's, um, how do I put it? You know, I don't like to do this very often. We have like two splash pages back to back because they kind of like, it gets a little messy here. But, you know, I usually like, if I have a big splash here, I'll usually have something a little more reserved over here and I won't have it bleed over to the left side of the page but with here you'll actually notice that I was trying to get people to read um, from obviously you're reading here then you go down left to right into this bottom part of the page and have your eye trail up instead of going over here to the top so I was using these kind of inset panels to kind of get you to read that way um, so anyway How's the stream health? Let me know. Uh, we have now the first time I drew a living robot, a uh, living transformer, and I think it came out pretty good. Uh, we've got some screen tone here. You can see the moray pattern kind of forming when I zoom in. Um, I like how I just had him have a little slot here for him to take his like disc out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Mission accomplished. Right on. Biz, thank you. Biz likes my lines in uh, black and white. I appreciate that. Stream's still good. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, oh, 
Jazz Miss Primes asks, how did drawing Starscream compare with drawing Optimus? Well, I like drawing Optimus better. Um, but, oh, oh, that's something I forgot. Hold on one sec, everyone. Hold on. I'm going to see if I can find this. I've got some of my sketchbooks here. I showed this on the stream with Felix last night, my art rep. Here's one of the first... Uh, sorry. Uh, not that. There we go. Sorry. Here's one of the first drawings I ever did of Optimus Prime. Not one of the first, but this is me trying to figure it out. Um, so this is me practicing before I like sign on the dotted line saying, Skybound, I will do this. Um, this is, yeah, this is me trying to figure it out. Um, sorry, I'm just getting back to my other page here on this, on the inks. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Look at the artwork. Nothing to see here. <laughs> okay, it's back. Um, let me see. Let me see if I can find something even earlier to show you my true humble beginnings with drawing Optimus. Not childhood, but here's volume 42. So let me see if I can find 41. That's 40 here. Here's 41. Okay. Yep, 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 okay. Uh, oh my gosh, damn. There we go. Here's some very, very early Optimus drawings with his Energon X. You can tell who the Motor Master. I love Motor Master. A preview of things to come, who knows? Um, but look at Optimus's face here. Completely ridiculous. Had no idea what I was doing. So uh, I needed some more practice. This was June 2022 to October 2022. This is right around the time that um, Skyman was asking me to work on Transformers. So let me see if I can find something else that's cool here. Here's a, this is random, here's a Star Wars drawing that I never finished. <laughs> <coughs> okay. Back to it. Um, sorry, one second. I lost it again. I'm going back, I'm going back to page eight, right? Set nine. Sorry, these files are big, so they are taking a while to load. Okay. So we're back to... No. Hold on. <laughs> I keep switching. Sorry, I'm so bad at this. So bad at this. About to show you my favorite page in the book. It's gonna load very soon. Okay. It didn't load. Sorry. I'm gonna get it, guys. I'm gonna get it. Well, this is so embarrassing. Okay. I'm gonna get this. Here we go, here we go. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. It's gonna load now. Wrong page. It's gonna load now. 
director's commentary. Here we go. Um, this page I uh, busted my butt on. I love this top panel with the undulating ums. Um, there's a bunch of story stuff happening. You can see Jetfire doing what he's supposed to be doing. Um, but you also see our human characters looking on with them kind of taking cover behind something that's so big they don't even really notice what it is. And then all along those, it's still like a really dynamic, fun to look at panel. So it's like doing all of the things at once that I'm very happy about. Um, I just, I just love this page, man. It was like my first time. I was like, I've got to show people. I got to prove to people that I can do this. And I think I did. I'm very, I'm very happy with it. Um, let's go down to this next one. Um, also very happy with this. I wish I could have made it so that Bumblebee was a little farther away uh, so that, you know, there wasn't as much closeness. I'd like a little more distance, but I was not able to do that because of composition. It just was the, it was, this was the composition that worked. This was the composition that worked. Um, and, uh, yeah, so that's what you got. And then this is a little preview of Optimus coming to save the day. Um, and again, frustrated with this page, not able to have the distance that I wanted. Um, just like I was trying to, I was like making them smaller and smaller and smaller in the composition over here. And they just were getting too small and the, the moment was getting taken away. So I had to finally just be okay with the fact that this is just too close. Um, I guess maybe I could have figured out a different way to do it, but I wanted to make sure that everybody knew that Jetfire was gravely injured by this blast, which means I couldn't really white it out. It had to be clear. So that's what you have. And of course, next we have a Rainmaker clothesline. As one does. This is a wrestling move. This is one of my favorite wrestlers, Katsu Katsujika Okada from New Japan Pro Wrestling. Of course, you know, the Rainmaker, the Lariat, is not new in professional wrestling, and it's by the end of this series, it will not be new to Transformers. So, um, oh, Silverbolt, sorry for making you cry. Uh, let me be totally honest about the Bumblebee page. Let's let me address this. Um, I do really, I do like Bumblebee. I don't like drawing Bumblebee. I don't like those rivets in his arms. Uh, that's not the only reason why he had to go. Um, I just honestly wanted to change things up. I just wanted to change things up, and I had seen a lot of Bumblebee. I think we all have in a lot of Transformers media, and I just thought it would be a fun little swerve. And this is actually funny. Our contact over at Hasbro was also a little tired of seeing Bumblebee everywhere and he, he actually asked before he saw my script he's like is there any way we cannot use Bumblebee in the main line and I I, I told him I was like I got good news for you <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> he had to go he had to go um, sorry Bumblebee fans sorry to let you down like that I, I am so sorry they are Transformers maybe they'll come back but not for a long time um, it's Cliff's time, baby. You said it. Um, let us continue. This is one of my, this is one of my favorite pages in the whole series. Let's just be honest. I, I'm so happy. The first time Optimus shows up alive and he's doing a clothesline in this issue one of Transformers relaunch 2023. Super exciting. I mean, what did you expect? I've got this wrestling belt that Optimus is wearing on a toy. Um, and of course, I you know, I actually was like self-conscious when I did this. I thought to myself, there's no way I can get away with doing two wrestling moves in a row, can I? <laughs> and I totally did. Um, uh, Optimus, I think, is an AEW kind of auto body. He doesn't do much lucha stuff, so he doesn't do a ton of crazy stuff. Uh... Yeah. Thank you, Holocron. He likes my paneling. So, I was like, I can't do this. Can I? I can. I'm writing and drawing this book. Let's do it. Why not? And actually, like, with my figures, like, I was like, 
with because I have a masterpiece star screen on the desk behind me. Can, would this work? You know, like can I actually make them do a suplex to each other? And they can. You can. Looks a little weird. But you just adjust a few things in the drawings, and you're good to go. Another thing that I'll notice that um, I'll give you a little preview of things to come art wise. You'll see Optimus's legs. You know, tra traditionally. You know, he's got kind of the 1970s design aesthetic here, which I think the Marvel comics did, where, you know, the, the, the leg kind of comes out. Like, so it, it makes kind of like a, a like a boot cut kind of style for his, his, like, lower half of his leg. And I hate drawing that. I hate drawing that. Look how straight these legs are. As this series goes on, you're going to see these legs get straighter and straighter. It's a stylistic thing. It's something that I've been kind of, like, it's been bugging me about drawing Optimus Prime. And it's just, I cannot stand drawing those legs widening out the bottom. It's like, it's something about it, it just like makes, makes my eyes hurt. I've never liked it in the comics. It always read weird to me that they got wider. Some, some characters, like I remember, uh, like when practicing, I was drawing Jazz. Jazz gets really wide. And if it's like, if it's really confident, like big and chunky, or Cliff Jumper, big, chunky, no big deal. This... Like Optimus's legs going wider, it's just like, is it is it going wider? Is it not going wider? Anyway, these are the ramblings of a crazy lunatic comic book artist. Uh, hi, Jeremy. Welcome. Glad you made it home safe. Welcome to the director's commentary. Of course, a very much inspired Jeff Senior page here. Um, kind of thinking about him as I did this. Very blocky, and I'm just kind of going for it. You know, it's ratchet, and I gotta be straight with you, like. Doing going this blocky on stuff is not easy. It can look really bad really fast. You want it to kind of be flowy, which is why I think we get away with this here, because I'm like doing things to Starscream's body that like don't actually make any sense. But again, going back to the toys, if it works, it works. Uh, what did Jack Kirby say? It's like it doesn't matter if it's correct, it just has to look right or something to that effect. Um, I do love this panel here. I love this panel. Uh, down here, it's like one of my faves. Um, it does a, again d dynamic. I love the hands here, and I love Starscream. You know, ordering him around, and I'm like, he's like on it. <laughs> also, notice the um, the color notes that I had to leave for Mike because <laughs> Skywarp and Starscream look exactly alike in black and white. Um. <laughs> So, yeah, a little flex in the bots, Jordan. You said it. Um, let's go to the next page. Oh, you know what? I want to show you something, oh, some little behind-the-scenes stuff. So I'm going to switch my camera back to me just for a second and see if I can find what I want to find here. So... My apologies, just give me one second, and let me see if I can get this. I don't know if I will, but... Set 15, okay. Uh-oh, come on, computer. You can do it. You can do it. My computer's not happy. Duplicate. Uh oh. Okay. Sorry, everyone. Um, my <laughs> poor computer is having a really hard time. Okay. So I'm going to go back here. Let's see if I can find this. Uh, come on, baby. Oh, while, while, I'm, while this is loading, the lad asks, any reason you went with a more modern style van, uh, a Ford Transit, rather than the traditional Nissan Vanette for a ratchet? You know what? I, um, I just didn't like the way the Nissan looked. Um, 
so I, I just, I really wanted something different. I just wanted something different. So, um, all right. So here we've got, let me make this bigger. Sorry. Here we've got the raw skin. Oh, sorry. Now the stream is having trouble. I pushed the computer a little too hard. No. <laughs> Stop motion. Oh, look at this. I changed the screen to my... Oh. <laughs> okay, let's see if we can get it back. Yeah, Decepticon computer. The audio still works. Okay, well, that's good. Oh, sorry, everyone. I just pushed it a little too hard. My other desk cam is up. Yep, thank you. You can see my back. <laughs> Let's see. Looking better? Okay. Cool. Sorry, guys. I just like if I do too many things on at the same time my computer gets so frustrated and so do I um, all right let's go back if we can to no not that there we go so um, here is this page which I I really love um, this is a little shout out to like the not making any sense um, of Transformers where, you know, very conveniently, this trailer just shows up out of nowhere. <laughs> so, you know, Red's like, what are we going to do? And he's like, we could use my trailer. <laughs> like, sometimes you just have to have fun. <clears throat> Not think too much about the story. Um, I love Windblade, Lion. Um, let's go to the next one. <laughs> So here, actually, so in the physical script, let me actually uh, switch over and select the next page to try and keep my computer a little more happy. Um, Oh, yes. There we go. There we go. Sorry. I keep hitting the wrong. Um, I keep hitting because I'm, uh, I'm an idiot, I guess. Okay. In, anyway, sorry. Sometimes when I'm out, because I do all my thumbnailing usually at a coffee shop or somewhere outside of the house, just so I can get outside of the studio for a little bit. Um, I'll do little doodles. If I'm kind of feeling stuck, I'll just kind of listen to some music and for like a half hour, I'll just kind of vibe with the script on the actual script. So like, this is a drawing on the issue one script that I have somewhere. And um, I will just like, I'll literally like take a picture of it with my iPad and just put it into Procreate if I like it enough. And that's what I did here. I just like, this worked super well. I was like, let's just take it with, take it there. And um, this has got some of my like favorite moments in all of the, you know, in all of the series. I mean, like, this is, like, fantastic. I love this. So, um, this is also really fun. I was originally going to draw Optimus entirely because I really do just love getting detailed with Optimus. He's really fun. But it was an opportunity for me to get really blocky with the, um, like, with the shapes, you know. And, like, it is a very blocky kind of thing. 
So I was like, well, why the heck not? Why don't I just go for it? And I think it works. Um, so, oh, Ipati wants to know about Jetfire, introducing Jetfire in, into the story. Was this done to hint at the events that happened to Cybertron before the war? So, full disclosure, Robert Kirkman came up with the Jetfire idea. Uh, Jetfire is one of Robert's favorite Transformers, and that's why he was chosen. Um, he's also, like, part of the lore. Um, and it was kind of, like, in this big outline that Jetfire was the one that comes in and finds the Autobots on Earth. In the arc. Autobots and Decepticons. But he is not doesn't have knowledge about the war. So, you know, I can't give away too much. But uh, that was a Robert Kirkman call, and I was happy to do it. I was a little afraid about drawing Jetfire at first, but um, I'm actually... Of course, I write the script first where he dies, because that's just what the story needed. Uh, but then as I got to drawing him, I was like, I really like drawing this guy. I'm so sad I have to kill him. <laughs> um, oh, an artist edition of Transformers? That'd be cool. Skybound, you heard it here first. Let's go to page 17. So... This, this page I am happy with, but I'm frustrated with this panel. This is great, the smoke's great, the storytelling's fine, but this drawing of Optimus makes me crazy. I don't know why, it just didn't work, I was having an off day. There's not a lot going on on this page, it shouldn't take me too long. This page took me so long. I do like this panel. I like the emotion here we get from the eyes. Cartoon Optimus. Chibi Optimus. Um, this is, of course, this is one of my absolute favorite panels in the whole book. This is one of my the favorite. This is one of my favorite panels that I have ever drawn in any series ever. Everything about this panel is just, I don't know. I just love it. And it gets a lot done in a very short amount of time with no words or almost no words. Um, yeah, Rob, uh, I mean, at least eight hours, it shouldn't have taken eight hours, it should not have taken eight hours, but I kept, you know, erasing and erasing, and look at all the tangents here, I, like, drawing, drawing, <laughs> drawing, I hate this little mouth thing on Starscream, it makes you crazy, don't do that anymore, I don't do that anymore, um, Drawing two blocky characters with one of the characters dropping another blocky character is very difficult. There's all these like very natural tangents that just happen all the time. So I'm like hyper aware of tangents now. Hopefully that'll make me a better artist in the future. I do love this page. I, I, I'm frustrated with how long this page took me, but I, I do love it. Um, <coughs> here we've got page 18. Um... A lot of storytelling in this one. I think this is a great page. I love it. Um, this, I mean, I don't know. I feel like this kind of speaks for itself. Um, oh, thank you, Countdown. This, uh, the, that panel I was talking about showed me how much I get Optimus Prime compared to other adaptations. I really, really appreciate that. That means a lot. It was very important that I get the tone of Optimus right, and I had to do it basically in one page. So, um, cause you just don't have enough room. Um, and you know, Optimus is a character that does not emote, uh, less so than even the rest of the cast because of the face shield, because so much of his face is taken up and he's really only got those eyes to work with. And I found that I was needing a way to channel Optimus through something. And I'm kind of trying to channel that through Spike, if you can't tell. Um, I have a tendency to not be subtle, so... <laughs> in life and in comics um sliding the gun super fun i rewrote this scene a few times because the humans were just sitting screaming you know spike and carly like oh my god what's happening behind some rocks and i was like they need to have some agency they need to get involved somehow and so that is why i had them push the gun and it forces action it just forces movement in a story it makes it gives it gives spike personality and like bravery and um i'm very happy with this moment um it's very hard to not just write fight scenes where it's just like fight 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 and finding new ways to tie everybody together and 
I wish I had more time to do this, but of course we work in genre fiction where there are deadlines and sometimes that can't happen, but I was glad that I was able to figure this one out. Um, all right, so let's see, let's go to the next one. Oh, um, oh, here's a fun little tidbit. So in the Marvel comics, I always really loved when Optimus Prime would be facing away from us and shooting his gun. So like this, let me see if I can, no, oh, here we go, okay, so like, let me see if I can emulate it, kind of like this, oh, see he's not focusing, but imagine there's like a panel and Optimus is like turned away and shooting, you know, whatever, right, because there was some great panels in the Marvel comics of Optimus doing that. I just always loved that look. Uh, which maybe is kind of a dumb specific thing, but like, I don't know. I just love, I love that. And I now am trying to find the page. So I wanted to make sure in issue one, I had a panel of Optimus, sorry, it's being difficult, shooting away from us at that angle. Um, which is why you have that here. You can see some of the, uh, the, the, um, trying to find a, the correct vanishing point for the speed lines. Um, this is with a parallel pen. And that is why you have <laughs> that, that very specific shot. Um, and there will be more. Have no fear. Um, also, drawing the back of Optimus's head is difficult and very satisfying when you get it right. Love, love this pose. There's a color note for night, for for Mike Thundercracker. <coughs> so fun, so fun. I love this panel. I love that pose. I love it. he's like he's coming together. Teltran one's putting him together, and um, yeah, let's let's go to the, one of my favorite pages. Okay, so you can see a difference here. In the two, uh, Optimus has got like super wide stance on the left version, and I tried to draw it this way, uh, and it did not work. Um, it just like looked he was like looked off balance, even though it doesn't make any sense. Like it should like if he's got a wide stance, he should be more on balance than if he's doing this kind of like walking pose, but. It just didn't work. It just did not work. So, um, this is a crappy piece of printer paper taped and glued over the very bad legs that I drew. Um, and now I love it. But it was like one of those things, and you've seen it on Friday with Ditos. Um, yes, well, Thundercracker's not killed. He just was not fully built. Ploppy. So, you know, it's not like I shot him in the heart or something. Just FYI. Um, but... Yeah, back to this. You've seen it before, where I've like I'm drawing something, <coughs> and I start losing it. You start losing the thread, and it's, something's not right. It's not it's not coming out quite right, and you keep trying to make it better, and you just keep losing it, and you keep losing it. And you get more and more frustrated, and like right as you're about to give up, you make a breakthrough, and that doesn't always happen. Sometimes the breakthroughs don't come, and you just gotta live with it, and you just gotta give it a rest, and you come back to it either the next day or in a few hours. You go on a walk, whatever. Here. I got it. I was wrestling with it. I mean, like, I was so messy. I remember it like it was yesterday. There's, like, ink everywhere. I'm pretty sure I got ink on my face because I was, like, probably picking my nose. And I got it. I figured it out. And I, like, I like it was, like, like an action movie where you, like, just barely make it over, like, the roof of the building where your plane is taking off. You know, where you're trying to escape a bomb. That's all I have to say about this page. The rest pales in comparison to this panel, which is like a victory panel. I feel like I should hang on to this. There's going to be a big art drop for the original art tomorrow, and I'm like, maybe I should just hang on to this one uh, because it just shows the grit of making comics sometimes. Here we go. The hero shot. Um... This is one that I really worked hard on. It looks a little clean to me now. You know, it doesn't have that grit that the previous page has, but I still really love it. And, you know, one thing I wanted to make sure I highlighted in this book 
was the transformations. I mean, it was really important to me that I made them dynamic and fun to look at. And I don't like doing the, you'll see this in a second, I don't like doing the Spider-Man jumping through the city, multiple versions of Spider-Man in the same panel. I just have no patience for it. I don't want to draw Spider-Man multiple times in a row um, in one panel. <laughs> Drawing him a ton, or drawing Optimus or whoever's transforming all throughout the page is enough times for me to draw him. So I wanted to do a bunch of mid-transformation stuff where they're actively doing something like carrying the humans while transforming. Which leads us to... Oh man, this is not going to be... Let me see if I can rotate it. So happy with this panel. With this page. It just looks great. You know, sometimes things just work. Sometimes things just come together great. And it just looks great. I was still figuring out how to get the logos right. I'm getting better. I'm getting better. They look a little dog-eared here. That's fine. You know, I was doing my best. I'm getting better. I am getting better. Each issue, you guys are going to be so impressed. You're going to see those those shield logos look better and better and better. Oh, man. Something to look out for. And completely silent. Super awesome. I was so happy when I came up with this idea. Oh, that's the wrong page. Let's see. 21? Where are you? Twenty three. Sorry. <coughs> yeah, I I don't know. Have I peaked? <laughs> Maybe. Um I also really love this interaction. Carly waving. Hi, you know, it's just like a total zoom in, just total like comedy bit. Um, and I'm really happy with it. And it also printed great. I was afraid that things get too squished in. I was cramming so much onto this darn page. It feels good to have it all work. Um, okay, here we go. Here is the uh, Jetfire the Jetfire panel where he transforms a bunch. I was like, let me try it once, see if I like it. I hated it. I don't, I don't hate the way it looks. I just hate drawing it a bunch of times over I love this panel oh that's amazing it looks so good that's a win um see this this one down here was very difficult drawing uh Jetfire he looks way better in the thumbnail than it does here he should be coming more at an angle that's probably the problem um I also love drawing F-15s uh, this is a terrible tangent. I apologize for my tangent error. I should be better. I'll be better next time. Um, drawing this darn Jetfire plane is so weird. It's like basically like a lump of clay with a bunch of crap on it, and you're trying to make it look like it can fly. Um, yeah, you know, whatever. I'm doing my best. I it, it, it works, right? The page, it works. This is like one of the best panels in the book. Uh... But yeah, like, never again. At least not if I can help it. And, okay, I think I remember what happened here. This is different than what I drew. So, this was not working. This is, like, too, eh, whatever. It just, like, wasn't dynamic enough, so I changed it. And then you got this, like, well, again, another one of my favorite panels in the book. Like, so fun. The cast shadow. The sound effect, the way your eye goes from here down to here, and it goes like up that way. So fun. Um, and again, another mid transformation. I feel a little bad that it's not super transformy. I love the way this is like hanging by a thread here. Um, Starscream is really hard, I've found. I've done it a few times to have him do mid transformation. With the wings, make it very weird. So I've been trying to work on that. And uh, this panel is fun because I almost never draw square panels, but it was just a necess necessary. This is over. The black, we're stopping. They're going off the page. And oh, that's my neighbor. And uh, yeah, so 
really fun. Let's see. Coming to the end, uh, getting close here. This page, I like this trail. You know, follow like with your finger. It's pretty fun. I love this panel of Optimus. And the only problem with this panel is Optimus is like again sinking into the ground because I needed a way for him to like fit and make have it all make sense. So it's okay. I love the shadow on his on Jetfire's face here. Thank you, everyone. I really appreciate all these amazing compliments. Um, it's so great to have this kind of support. I'm sorry. It is getting kind of late, and I haven't had dinner yet. I feel like maybe I should order food or something. Anyway, almost there. Actually, let's see. Do you all mind if I just order food really fast? Sorry, this might be not very professional. I'm just so hungry, and I know if I like wait to order, you know, does it make sense? Okay, hold on. Sorry, everyone. Just give me one sec. Maybe I should wait till after the stream. I know this isn't like Friday with D-dubs, but I'm just I'm so hungry. Guys, do I do I get do I get Portillo's? I think I get Portillo's. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Sorry, everyone. I'm so sorry. Oh, my gosh. You know what? We had a great day yesterday. We're going to do Express on uh, DoorDash. This is so expensive. Oh, my God. It's okay. Wow. Okay. I have just ordered DoorDash. The order is in. Now we can continue on. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, let's go to the next page. Trying to fit in a bunch of stuff at once. Not easy. You know, notice here, I actually used a little bit of like an airbrush here just for some India ink. <clears throat> I just wanted to try if I, and see if I could do it without screen tone. Just to, for, So I taped off this top part. So it's just white and screen uh, and airbrushed it a little bit and it works really worked really well. I don't want to use it too much because airbrush has a tendency to look kind of, um, if you don't use it right, can look a little too, uh, how do I put it, like uh, pure t-shirt art, if that makes sense. Like you're on family vacation and you see like Chicago, like an airbrush, it, it, it gets a little gaudy. But it works here if you just if you're tasteful with it, and uh, yeah. So and I like this like shiny. It's sunrise, sunrise for Mike right here. Okay. Uh, back to uh, the Decepticons here. I wanted to have a. Uh... <laughs> yes, the Fortillo's comments are real. <laughs> Oh man, there are people who don't know about Portillo's here. Oh shoot, uh, Portillo's is a Chicago chain. It's like Chicago style hot dogs, uh, Italian beef, cheeseburgers, the whole lot. It's not good for you, but man, I love it. Um, all right, so we're this page, and um, it's all about this baby. It's all about trying to give some, trying to give some, you know, other something other than. Decepticons are all evil, rah! Like, Soundwave is a bad dude. But man, he loves his tapes. And one of these tapes is hurting bad, and he's, he's, he's feeling real bad about it. So, um, unfortunately, <laughs> poor Russ. You know, like, I didn't give him any room. This is my fault. Again, I'm sorry, Russ, my fault. Uh, I'm working on it. I love... Look at these guys. This is just awesome! God! I nailed these poses here. Not so much with Skywarp, but these guys. Just like perfect. So pumped. So frustrated here, though. I was like, why can't he look as good as these other ones are looking? It's okay. Oh, also, another great moment here. Do not say his name. Tech. Tech. Perfect. Perfect. 
and I don't like doing middle page transitions, but I had no time. And I'm tired, so I'm going to start wrapping it up. Um, let's see here. Uh, my favorite thing about this page is the cast shadow here from the grading. Uh, <coughs> cat dad. Soundwave's an evil cat dad. I like that. Um, and uh, this one was a tough one. Trying to draw electrical plants. Oh my god. If you're ever writing a comic book and you have a scene that needs to take place somewhere, don't make it an electrical plant. Take it from me. It is not fun. <laughs> I was like, I'm drawing this. I'm like, why did I do this? Why did I write this this way? I could have done anything. <coughs> okay. Friday with D-dubs. No. Transformers issue one director's commentary. Come watch Dan struggle with his computer and uh, hit the wrong hotkeys and have a terrible cough. You see, I changed the pose a little bit. This was a dark day. This page was rough. I, I like it now, but... Oh, and this is like... This panel down here is awesome. I was really trying to get good at this underlighting. I'm getting better and better. Um, it's just really fun. With, like, Starscream, the way his, like, chest piece comes up, it just makes for, like, perfect, very, like stoic kind of intense um blacks that can just go over his face it's so good it's so fun and here we've got the last page um hasbro asked for uh davy to be uh killed off screen which i was totally fine with and uh did want to get kind of messy with it though because i i did want to kind of make a little, little bit of a statement you know it's a book that your kids can read but you know not everybody's going to make it, so... <laughs> um. Oh, yeah, there you go. More Iron Giant. You know, it's funny. I wasn't thinking of Iron Giant when it came to the electrical plant when it comes to that, though. Um, but Iron Giant, it's, uh, its influence on me is very much in these pages, for sure. Um, also frustrated with this panel. This top one. I was like, why doesn't... I, I, was, I was getting a little stiff. It's, it's a little too I cared a little too much and one cool thing though is that Mike Spicer killed the colors on this he just did so well it looks so good with the colors it looks better in the colors than it does in black and white I really think that it just looks so nice And it's just so clean. I just Mike really, really did an amazing job. I love these kind of earthy tones that grounds us. That's a tangent that I didn't mean to happen, but it's there. Oh well. Thank you so much, Mike. And thank you so much, Russ, for putting up with all of these letters. Like, yeah, let's go back to that page where the poor Decepticons are getting their entire bodies cut off by exposition. Oh, I'm sorry. So, Russ did a great job. He found a way to make it work. But, you know, that's, that's not right. I, should, I, should, I need to be better. Uh, oh, yeah, this info dump. <laughs> you know, like, just basically, like, here's what we need. Uh, but, hey, you know, sometimes the story calls for what the story calls for. And that's okay. Yeah, let's just, really quick, like, these colors by Mike. So beautiful. So beautiful. Thank you so much, dude. Oh, oh, I can't believe it. I can't believe how good this comic looks. Look at this. Look at this. It's so good. <sighs> Feels good. Thank you so much for being here for this director's commentary. Let's see how far away my food is. Oof, we still got a ways to go. It's okay. Um, all these comments are amazing because my computer is so slow I think they're like a few minutes behind um, Lion asks will the alternative mode of Transformers be more clearly read in the future it's just 
that I didn't see black stripes on the ratchet from his ambulance appearance. Well, you know, I'm doing my best, but, um, you know, some creative liberties here and there may, you know, go on and on. We'll see. Um, oh, Badansky and Furman waiting for a call. So I got to be honest, Cheesier, that is very much out of my pay grade, above my pay grade. So you'd have to talk to Skybound about that. Um, Comic Book Cumbles Counseling in the chat. Thank you so much. Uh, more D-Dubs commentaries. I'll do my best. Um, this is an extra long one because what are we at? We're at like 120? Holy cow. Um, uh, I will Google when the next issue comes out. I should probably find it out. I should know that. Oh, I think it says in the back of... Uh, November 8th, there you go, the day after I leave for Japan, um, this is a really fun, uh, I'm going to try and do an issue two as well, um, and I'll be a little more ready, and it won't be as long, because it won't be 20 pages, but, um, it's just so good to be here, it's so good to have the support, uh, yesterday was incredible, thank you so much for the outpouring of love, um, from you and the rest of the world, I mean, it was amazing, so many people telling me how much they loved the book, I mean, it was awesome. It was absolutely awesome. So cool to hear all that. And, um, yeah, I just thank you for being here. Um, what's my favorite variant cover so far? <coughs> I really like that Ryan Otley variant. But I, 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 lo I love them all. I also love the the melty uh, Starscream that Ian Bertram did. I love Ian Bertram's stuff. So great. Um Let's see. Um, okay, a few logistical things. Tomorrow, there's going to be an art drop for the entirety of issue one. Uh, the original art is available to buy tomorrow. This is going to be at 11 o'clock Central Time um, on my art rep's website, felixcomicart.com. Make sure to give him a follow to find out exactly what time. I'm 90% sure it's 11 Central. Um, we're going to have graded copies of the Issue 1 Ash Can from San Diego Comic-Con that have remarks on them. Very exciting. Um, that are already slabbed at 9.8, so that's really cool. I'm um, going to have all the covers available for uh, most of the variants, including other artists. Um, the, every page in here is going to be available, even like the art that I did for this little illustration right here is going to be available uh it's going to be a big deal i think i'm pretty excited nervous we'll see how it goes um that is going to be tomorrow so if you do care about original art and you want to maybe check that out please do felixcomicart.com um and then i should be on with friday with d-dubs as long as time permits no guarantees but i'm, I'm going to do my best and uh Oh, any clue on price range? I cannot speak to that, actually. Felix doesn't tell me because it just stresses me out. My ARP is great for uh, letting him deal with a lot of things that I don't want to deal with. So, thank you, Felix. Um, Jeremy, need that page with the Rainmaker. Good luck. Um, Punk for issue two. Haven't been ex excited about waiting for a monthly comic in ages. So glad, Silver Bolt. Bolt. Um... Thank you, everyone, for being here. I have to go. I'm exhausted. Uh, and let's see. Well, uh, food is really taking its sweet time. That's okay. Love you all. Thank you again for being here. What a great time. Uh, it's been so great to have everybody on the stream. We've had a ton of people join in. So awesome. Um, I don't know what else to say. I don't know what else to say. I just can't believe it. Keith, thank you for showing up. Thank you, Keith. Thanks for the vote of confidence. Keith Becker in the chat. Um, I'm going to sign off. I'm going to let my computer cool off because it is running. I don't know if you can hear it. Uh, thank you, everybody, for being here. Godspeed. Bye-bye. Oh, well, last question. What... Did you use for ref for Jetfire? I used 
Google Images. I don't have a Jetfire toy. Or I do now, but I didn't when I, thanks to Lord Retail over at Acme Comics, I have a Jetfire now, but I did not have one when I started the series. So uh, that is why. But, oh yes, that's all. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Oh my god. Thank you so much for the support. This is amazing. I can't believe it. Just doing my best. Thank you for being here.